Fearscape Media Network, exploring the unknown, one podcast at a time. Support for the Fearscape Media Network is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer just for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code FEARSCAPE at manscaped.com. Fearscape, a paranormal podcast, part of the Fearscape Media Network. Prepare to be spooked. <laughs> New episodes every Wednesday on all major podcast platforms. Find out more at fearscapepodcast.com. Coming to you from nowhere, a suburb of parts unknown. Your ghoulish hosts for an evening of terror, Stephen Gearhart and Lance Wayne, the Misters of the Dark. <laughs> Good evening, dear friend. Welcome to another terrifying episode of Mysteries of the Dark. As always, we're beaming directly to you from nowhere, a suburb of Parts Unknown. I'm your co-mister, the man with no name, Lance Wayne. And I'm your head mister, Lord Stefan Gearhart. And you couldn't have arrived at a better time. <sighs> we're in the middle of winter here at uh, mm. Nowhere and... Mm. And uh, in order to sort of lift our spirits, we thought, what better way to celebrate than with a good old BBQ? We have one every year and invite all the villagers, but sadly, they never show. I'm not really sure of the reason. I can only guess it's because we spend most of our time butchering them or they just don't like us. Hey, Lance, you think it's about time to put another soy through the barbie? Oh my, I almost forgot. If you would, please step in. <coughs> Stefan and myself only cook with the finest grade A meat. They've happened to provide with us with our full spread today. Uh, it was, of course, if we ran a commercial on our program for them. So, without any further ado, Sawyer's DBQ. Stefan, roll that beautiful bean footage. Soil's Last Chance Texas Barbecue, located way off of Highway 79 in Round Rock, Texas. Ain't your daddy's barbecue. <laughs> no, you may taste your daddy in it, but it ain't his. <laughs> no, sir, we've been slow smoking generations of people. <laughs> I mean, for generations of people here in Texas. People say our barbecue is so good, you can taste the soul in it. All of our meat is made from organic meat from all over and is butchered human. <laughs> oh, Lord, I mean butchered humanely and using the finest chainsaw cuts allowed by the FBI. Excuse me, the FDA. <laughs> now, no matter what you get, it all tastes like chicken. So if you get lost and you're hungry, you'll find us. Oh, we'll find you. Sawyer's Last Chance Texas Barbecue. It's finger tasting good. Closed on Sundays. And remember, kids, you too can sell your soul for some spare ribs. Speaking of soul, I think I happen to see a lost one heading our way. Ooh, really? Someone's going to finally risk their life. <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, join in our hate winter miss summer festivities. Oh, my. And not just anyone. That's horror legend and Texas Chainsaw Massacre star John Dugan. Oh, my God, Grandpa. 
Yo, that is it. Oh, thank you so much, John Dugan, for being on Misters of the Dark. Thank you Woo! so much for stopping by. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, the legend. Soup. The legend. You got to say it like that, Lance. The legend. Or the John legend. Dugan. Legendary. The man. The legend. <laughs> the man with a name, John Dugan. The man with a name. John Dugan. <laughs> 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 oh man well yeah obviously we're huge fans and uh we thank you man you know we're good friends with keith age and we're always thankful for him for hooking us up with some of the coolest people we've had to meet with you being I, at the you top know, of the keith list, and i used to room together on the road back oh man fucking, you, oh wow sorry bastard. Years ago. i got some stories <laughs> about that fucking guy oh, I, mean. I guarantee <laughs> just in the two years i've known him i've got some stories man what He's is it what of, He's kind of ate up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. What well, isn't up. he the rock? The rock? What is it? The rock, rock and star? roll ghost hunter. Yeah, the rock and roll ghost hunter. Yeah, he thinks because he can play the bass. <laughs> yeah, can't everybody? Yeah, yeah. I, just, I, t- I tell him all the time. I'm like, oh like, wow, we need a bass player. I what? Do you play? No, but I could learn in like a day and a half. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> For all rock. It, Throw is a there rock a bass in a bar? You can find a bass player. Yeah. Is there a bass player in the house? Everybody raises their hand. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Now my wife is a bass player, but because she's a woman, it's extra cool. Yeah, women bass players are super. Oh hot. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing hotter than a, a there's nothing hotter than a female slap bass player. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. There's um, this chick from Louisville. From the I think it's the name of the band is the Creeping Cruds or something like that. <laughs> That's my neck of the woods. Yeah, I, I don't believe I've heard of them. And she's a uh, creeping crud. Nah, the creeping cruds are Nashville band. However, she plays a you know a big stand up slap bass and boy, oh she's yeah, so fucking hot. <laughs> she like, you know, she like stands on it and plays it at the same time and shit. You know. Yep. Yep. Yeah, she's all it. tits and ass and everything. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, she's got that tab, man. Tits, ass, and bass. Like, that's, that's, what? All you need. that's all you need is the tab. Well, what's the matter, Lance? I don't think, hey, I, I, I just thought I just thought this interview. <laughs> he's a good old boy. He's a good old boy. He acts like he's all like rough and rowdy, but he gets he turns beet red real quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Turns be red, red I was quick. I was raised Baptist, so you have to forgive me. <laughs> yeah, well, my my old man was an Irish Catholic, and my mom was a like a Presbyterian or some shit. <laughs> so I kind of so I kind of slipped between the cracks. I was like, no, no, I ain't going to church. Your dad slipped and between ever, the cracks as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know. What was that stuff? I said you? your dad what slid. Be- I said your dad slid between the crack too. That's how you came out. Oh, yeah. oh my god! <laughs> hey, that's my mom you're talking about. <laughs> We're just <laughs> digging with Dugan, ladies. Yeah, and gentlemen. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I walked in on them twice, man. They were like <laughs> fucking jackrabbits. Man, so my dad, so my parents my got mom, divorced when I was three. And my so mom my had dad had five children in 11 years. Oh, oh, she just dropped them. <sighs> my dad was a single dad. And when I was three years old, so this man had a new woman every other week because he was a mobile DJ and all this stuff. So I never walked in on my parents, but I walked in on my dad quite a few times with oh, your dad different was people. mommy. Oh, yeah, with Aunt Mommy, exactly. <laughs> One of his 15 I, wives. I, th- I think my parents stopped after uh, I was born. So, Well, can you blame them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've already achieved greatness. They didn't even give you a name. <laughs> they didn't oh, even give me a name. Please. Please <laughs> they, were just, they were just like, here he is, world. <laughs> we well, achieved perfection. Look, there's yeah. my dog. Hey, all right. Uh, well, hey. this is a perfect segue talking about having babies and where yeah, you're yeah. from and all that. Because the first question we wanted to ask you is just, you know, where did you grow up? You know, what what was your childhood I grew up like in uh, in Clay County, Indiana? Oh, not too far. Yeah, the, not too far. Which yeah. is uh, 
Now, Lance, you're from Louisville. Well, uh, I'm. You I'm, guys are from Louisville. Yeah, I, I just yeah. lived out to Phoenix, and Lance technically lives in Taylorsville. But um, I'm, I'm in Louisville yeah. constantly. Oh, oh, yeah, Taylorsville. So, uh, don't tell me you drive out Taylorsville Road and you end up in Taylorsville. <laughs> yes, yes, that's exactly. I didn't even know that. How did you? <laughs> Excuse this, me, can you tell me how to get to Taylorsville? Go up here, Taylorsville Road. <laughs> and just keep on going. Yeah, just keep <laughs> just keep going until you meet a man with no name. <laughs> <laughs> um so Clay County is about oh Jesus, maybe two and a half hours from Louisville. Mm-hmm. Oh. North and uh it's in west central Indiana. So, uh, yeah, you got to go to Indianapolis and make a hard left. Yeah, that's what I was guessing. <laughs> there. Yeah, near like maybe Bloomington and, and we're about further. we were about you know maybe twenty miles from the Illinois border. Hmm. Uh, so it's that you know that far west in Indiana, and it's really really rural. And at the time, it was mostly. Uh, Agricultural and industrial, like mining. Yeah. You know, farming and mining. That's all mm-hmm. there was mm-hmm. there when I was a kid, you know. Then all the, they, they mined out all the, all the coal and all the gravel and all the clay and all that shit. And everybody just left. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Well, yeah. that happened Gee, quite a thanks bit. for letting us rape your land. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're out of a job now. Welcome yeah. to Clay County, where our biggest yeah. export is coal. <laughs> so, uh, actually, the the, um, uh, 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 the population of the city has uh, fallen by about 1,000 or 1,500 people since oh, I left. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. Because there's just no, you know, the young people just. Yeah, there's no work. Yeah, a lot of Eastern smart. Kentucky towns are like that, too. <laughs> They're like me. They got the hell out of Dodge when they got out of high school, <laughs> which is what I did. I was like, fuck this. I went to Chicago. Yeah, I love <laughs> Chicago. Oh, God, I love Chicago. Oh, yeah, we're both improvisers. I've performed quite a bit up in Chicago. I mean. Oh, really? Yeah, improv mm-hmm. capital of the world. So Yeah. <laughs> Been up there a million oh, yeah. times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's why I like about. Improv- that's where the improv Olympics started, I think. Yeah, I am. Yeah, in yeah. Second, well, Second City kind of technically started in St. Louis, but it's technically still Chicago. Uh, but, yeah, that's one thing I like about Phoenix. There's a number of different Chicago pizza places that I love that happen to have one or two stores here in Phoenix because, you know, all these old white people like their Midwest stuff that they left behind. <laughs> <laughs> Retired folks. Yep. So it works for me because I get my Lume and all kinds of good Playing stuff. bumper cars and their gigantic fucking <laughs> Oh, big boats. We, uh, my dad and I always called them boats. And, in God, fact, yeah. I, uh, my first car was scary. a Lincoln Town car. That was my very... Very, very first car was my dad's old boat. <laughs> oh, God. Yep. My Call- my parents had two of them for a while, a town car and a Mark 8. <laughs> Woo, shit. Boy, Good that Lord. Mark was nice. Yeah. That Mark was nice, man. Uh, put a, a light on the top of your car and pull people over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I love that fucking car. It actually had that the ground hugging effects where the faster you went, the lower the ground it would get. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, suspension would go down to make yep. it more streamlined and shit. Yeah. <laughs> that was a cool fucking automobile. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, now, what about uh, when, uh, you know, we obviously know you as an actor. So how did you get into film and acting and stuff like that, especially coming from acting Clay? I in high school. And believe it or not, you know, as I didn't know, <laughs> I always had sort of a, a fucking creative. Uh, Bug? You know, yeah. side, uh, yeah. or, you know, or interest. I was always sort of a creative. And, um, um. I didn't know what I was going to do. I had no desire to go to college. Mm. 
know how that feels. Um, <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I just wanted, once school is over, I just want to fucking out, you know. Yeah. After yeah. Half. I didn't know what I was going to do. And then, uh, but anyway, my junior year in high school, uh, you know, the, 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 the high school drama club was doing a play and it was a period piece. It was like, took place in the, you know, 1300s or something, like in a <laughs> castle. Like Tartu. In a castle in England. It was <laughs> called The Secret Behind the Walls. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it was a children's play, you know. And uh, this is going to sound so stupid, you guys, but we had heavy, uh, back then, uh, uh, dress codes in public schools in Indiana. You had to dress a certain way. You had to wear mm -hmm. a shirt with a collar. Yeah, you had we to had have to your do hair that. Cut. Louisville had done that when I was in high school. They went to a heavy dress code with uniforms and stuff for public schools. Oh, that's we're, just bullshit. Yeah, we were lucky. We were lucky. We were lucky to have clothes in Taylorsville, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> still lucky. You know, we're still lucky to have yeah. shoes in Taylorsville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we still, we still ain't got those moving pictures, though. <laughs> you got no picture show? No, no, no picture shows. <laughs> um, we, get all, we get clean. It's just draw on the side of a building every now and then to tell us stories. Well, anyway, the, the, the head of the, you know, the speech drama teacher, head of the drama club and all that stuff. Um, she put out the word that anybody, any, because they always had a hard time getting guys, you know, boys, mm -hmm. yeah. teenage yeah. boys, essentially, to come out, you know, and audition for plays, you know. So a lot of times, you know, in the high school plays, girls had to play the men parts and stuff. <laughs> oh, what? Because guys... Yeah, because guys, it was just pussy stuff. Yeah, you know? it, was, it was too cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to play football. Even opposite though of Shakespeare, where it was the men all playing the women. Part. Yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I thought. Totally yeah. the opposite. Yeah, yeah, that's the way my so, high school um, was, too. She put out the word that any boy who got cast in this play wouldn't have to have his hair cut for like six weeks or two months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she had the biggest turnout for auditions ever. Oh, I bet, especially at that time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, uh, yeah it was it was 1969. So, oh, wow. Well. Uh, for sure, yeah. Yeah. 69, it, 60, it was 68, maybe. 68 or 69. And uh, <laughs> so a whole bunch of us showed up. She was very pleased with the turnout. Anyway, I got the lead role. Oh. Oh, that's great. And once the curtain went up on that on opening night, I was hooked. Oh, you got the acting bug, huh? Yep. That was it. I thought this is something I can do, and I'm pretty goddamn good at it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds very similar and, to uh, story too. Yeah. And then my girlfriend at the time was applying to art schools in Chicago, and she had a a, a, a catalog for the Art Institute, Institute of Chicago. Mm. And in the back of it, I was flipping through it. In the back of it, there was a a, a thing, uh, three or four pages about the theater school hmm. at the Art Institute, which was the Goodman School of Drama. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, I didn't even know theater school was a thing, you know? Yeah. So I applied and I got an audition and I drove to Chicago and spent the entire day uh, auditioning it was a whole day audition. Oh man! <laughs> uh, most of it was uh, improvising. <laughs> oh, Chicago! <laughs> and and then yeah, and then uh, once we were all comfortable and improvised all these things, we did our pieces, our audition pieces, and then they had us. Uh, doing our pieces and improvising on that. I mean, it was a really cool audition. Hmm. Anyway, I was accepted. Awesome. You know, a cool. hundred people out of 
several thousand people in the country. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I know the school you're talking about. Yeah, it was a pretty amazing school. So. Yeah, and uh, so I did three years there. Anyway, that's how... Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I did want to tell you a story, My hair looks though. terrible. No, no, it looks great. Looks speaking great. Speaking of hair, I got to tell you a story because you'll appreciate this. In, so this was 68 or 69 as well. My dad is from a small town in Michigan, and uh, he's probably about the same age as you because he graduated in 1969 from high school. And uh, he, yeah, I graduated in 71. He yeah. So you guys are pretty similar age. So he's like this. He yeah. said this is like 68 or 69. And there was a guy in town that had long hair. And of course, everybody wanted to have long hair, of course, and stuff like that as well. Um, but the the father of this this high school kid like or actually he had just graduated high school and his dad hated it. His dad hated that he had long hair. So he told everybody in the small town that he would pay anybody fifty dollars. And this is 1968, fifty dollars, anybody that could cut his son's hair. And so everybody started carrying scissors in their back pockets, like all the dads around the town and everything oh, like that. Oh, good God. And this <laughs> poor guy was getting oh, chased my. all over Holly, Michigan, like for months, like everybody trying to catch him and hold him down to cut his hair. What so a they fucking terrible bucks. thing to do to your own child. Yeah. Like, and he was 18 at the time. Like he was allowed to have the long hair. He could do whatever the hell he wanted to. Yeah, really? <laughs> but yeah, that's one of my favorite stories my dad tells. He's like, yes, you know, that because 50 bucks. Oh, I'll tell you, uh, on here. a similar note. I don't know if you've seen that thing with the dad who <laughs> his son his son gets caught shoplifting or lying or doing some minor kid thing you know mm -hmm. it's about a 10 year old yeah. boy <laughs> to teach him a lesson his dad takes him to the barber <laughs> <laughs> Has his hair cut in male pattern, male pattern baldness. <laughs> <laughs> so he looks like a, he looks like a ten-year-old old bald man. Oh man, that's fantastic! <laughs> that's the funniest goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that sounds like something my dad would have done. Man. Oh God, it's well, that funny. Well, that that's a that's actually that's a good segue. It's visual though. I mean, you have to really <laughs> see the thing. So goddamn funny. But speaking of uh, old men, that's a good segue into uh, you were in this movie called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Do you? Oh remember? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, never heard of it. Finally got around to that. <laughs> <laughs> never heard of it. We could talk about haircuts all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as somebody's getting cut, you know, people. Be... <laughs> yeah, no shit. But yeah, you, you were in how? I mean, we got it. We got to We got to get to it. You were at okay, a. Okay, I was. I was twenty years old. I was doing a, a children's play at the Goodman Theater for the yeah, summer. Yeah. I have, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Called Teradiddle Tales. <laughs> Two shows a day, six days a week, for like oh. 175 bucks. Gotta love children's theater, man. Like, what is that? Like 12 bucks a show or some shit? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, man. It's not and, much uh, better. I, I worked for a theater company doing children's shows and we got paid like 25 bucks a show. Whoa! This was, this was only damn, like Steph eight I... years ago, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I tell them yeah. that you know what's the point exactly. Might as well don't give me anything. Yeah. Why should make me pay to do this job? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, and Kim Hankel called. Kim was married to my sister, the writer producer of Chains. Yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, he called me and said, "Hey, John, man, you crazy." Remember, this was 1970. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he told me what he needed me to do for him. And I, you know, I went the next uh, day and uh, put my notice in on the play. 
and uh, the producer Bella Itkin, who was an old Russian uh, Russian immigrant woman <laughs> from a like long line of uh, Russian uh, uh, theater people. Oh, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure. Her, her father was a, a was a uh, you know a Russian theater artist. You know, and she just yeah. uh, she just grew up in the business of that. And she had one. <laughs> She had one eye that always kind of went off one direction. There was always a little bit of like <laughs> custard coming out of oh, coming out oh, of oh, oh, oh <laughs> man! Can you, can you pass me? So can you pass me that bottle? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she um, oh. she said when she asked me what the role was, and I told her about the grandpa role. <laughs> she said uh, Roddy McDowell would have never done Planet of the Apes if he had not been an established actor first yeah I have, I have that written down yeah, we yeah. Have that, looking at that yeah. quote right there uh, oh really uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I got compared to Roddy McDowell right off the bat yeah take yeah, it yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> and then you know when the film came out uh, Ebert, Roger Ebert, who I knew, you know, mm -hmm. because Chicago and all that. I didn't know him before that, but afterwards I, I met him and, and uh, knew him pretty well. But um, when he wrote the review for it, you know, and he was a huge fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And he, uh, he usually hated horror films. He liked good films. Yeah. So, oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he was a big fan, and he um, he referred to my character, to me, uh, as Grandpa, as being like uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman's character of old what's his name, old Joe or whatever, in a Little Big Man. Mm. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Like in a matter of two or three years, I got compared to uh, Malcolm McDowell and uh, Jeez. <laughs> Justin Hoffman. Yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. So the first time, the first time I met Ebert was on New Year's Day, uh, nineteen. Fuck me. I don't remember that year. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I would have lived in that decade. Uh, it must have been 75. It would have been uh, New Year's Day of 75. And we, <laughs> everybody, everybody who'd woke up on the floor of this party. <laughs> 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 at, at Charlie's apartment, which was a great apartment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, his nickname was the Senator. <laughs> But he had this great apartment, <laughs> and uh, he threw fucking wild ass parties. So about six of us woke up, different couches and chairs and the floor, you know, laying from the fireplace, that sort of shit. So uh, you know, we all start rousing. You know, the people who were left behind <laughs> and just crashed there. We all start rousing. We drink whatever beers left in the fucking refrigerator. You mm -hmm. know, at fucking <laughs> ten o'clock on <laughs> New Year's Day in the morning and uh it's like we need to go do something <laughs> so what was her name betty dirty betty we called her <laughs> is this story real <laughs> yeah this is a real story this is I a read real this story in penthouse come on yeah. now. <laughs> but I can't... yes i've never written no letter like this before, but <laughs> let me tell you about Dirty Betty. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a country song. <laughs> I was I was a virgin of fifteen when that Dirty Betty. <laughs> no. um, On a cool summer's morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so anyway, she was like one of the only one of us who had a car. <laughs> that was that was Big Al Cochran, Dirty Betty, me, and. Uh, uh, Billy Abel and 
I think maybe Gail Mitchell. So we all hop in this jalopy that Betty has, and we head out to find a place that's open to get a drink. You know? <laughs> we decide to go to Aurora's, which is a famous Irish pub on on uh, North Avenue in Chicago, in Old Town. And we walk up, we find a parking spot, and the streets are deserted, you know. It's like noon on New Year's Day. And uh, we walk up there, and uh, there's a sign on the door that says, closed for <laughs> private party. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and Bill Abel just takes the sign off the door, tears it up, throws it on the ground. <laughs> so much for that to walk in. You know? <laughs> so we're sitting there, and they had free pitchers of black velvets on the bar, which is uh, Guinness with champagne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, I'll <laughs> Whoo, what a day. <laughs> but there were just, there were just uh, you know, beer pitchers of this stuff on the bar. <laughs> you grab yourself a glass and Fill it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I noticed Roger Ebert sitting at the bar. So I get up, you know, I take a big slug, get up my courage and go over to say, uh, Mr. Ebert? He goes, yes. I said, I'm John Dugan. He goes, that name sounds familiar. I said, yeah, I played. Uh, no, I said, I'd like to thank you for comparing to me to Dustin Hall. And he said, uh, I didn't realize I'd done that, John. And I said, yeah, I played <laughs> grandpa in the Texas Chainsaw. I played grandpa in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And he went, no shit. I love your part. <laughs> and we talked for quite a while. And then Bill Abel, who was just trashed at this point. Well, he was trashed when he woke up, I think. But... <laughs> I could see him looking kind of cross-eyed, one eye, you know, hand over one eye, head tilted sideways, trying to focus. He sees I'm talking to Roger Ebert, and <laughs> he comes over <laughs> and goes, uh, "Aren't you Roger Ebert, the favorite, uh, the famous reviewer?" <laughs> and Ebert goes, "Yes, yes, I am." And he goes. Review this and drops his fucking pants. In the <laughs> Bends over and gives him a gives him a huge fucking moon, dolls, you know, balls dangling and everything from behind him. So I was like, oh goddamn, you know. And the bartender runs around from behind the bar, and we all fucking gather up our shit and run out the goddamn door. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, so did he write a review? Oh, yeah, he had. He'd written a review. He'd already written a review. Oh, no, uh, that. Uh, yeah, that, that. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, Bill Abel's ass. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> I'd like to see what he had. Yeah, to I, want, say I, want, I want to know if he gave it a thumbs up. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a thumb Thumbs up. Thumbs up his ass. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, well, I heard you also worked as a grip and production assistant. Yeah. I can't even get to. It. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, what? What's the matter there, Lance? <laughs> I, I, how, how do you how do you go from from uh, Bill Abel's asshole? I don't know how to it's, uh, how to segue. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh well, yeah, well, Billy Abel's asshole. I wonder if he's still alive. Him or his asshole? <laughs> He'd be. <laughs> Remember, man, it's not the hole that counts; it's the skin around it. <laughs> Just now, I know what I'm going to. You know what? I used to say that to people, those redneck fuckers that I grew up with when they call me a little asshole. There was always a little involved. Mm -hmm. I shut up, you little asshole. I'd always respond with, remember, it's not the whole that counts. It's the skin around it. They'd always go like, what? What the fuck you mean by that, man? What the fuck? <laughs> you know, and then my friends start laughing, and they're like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> What's so funny? What the hell? What? <laughs> now I know I'm going to have them. I'm always like, I'm always like fucking with dumbasses, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so great. Where was I? I can't. I, oh, yeah, I worked. Uh, oh, I also on Texas Chainsaw Master, you know, I did grip work and production assistant work. Mm-hmm. I was out there quite a bit uh, when I wasn't really scheduled to work, but I wanted to learn about the filming process, you know, with my first film. Well, and you weren't? No, actually, I'd done, I actually, I'd done a video for a, a, a insurance company, a training video. Tell us. So, but it was my first feature, uh, first feature film. Well, I mean, you were learning from one of the masters, Toby Hooper. I mean, that had to be a. Well, no, yeah. actually, fucking Daniel Pearl. Go. On. <laughs> yeah, he was a true genius on that fucking show. Yeah. No, yeah. All I mean, this, all uh, the cinematography, Toby was okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Toby's all right. He just tells people <laughs> what to do. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he was a, you know, there's no love lost between me and Toby or pretty much anybody in the original cast. And Toby. Oh, oh, really? Wow. He, uh, well, yeah, he, you know, he made his career off Texas Chainsaw Massacre and he did not give any one of us a leg up in the business didn't hire any of us after that yeah yeah except hmm. for except for jim cedo jim cedo is the only one that he hired after us because he kind of had to right you know because everybody else was either dead or was wearing heavy makeup so yeah um and the last time i saw toby was at uh, the lot at Lorimar Productions, which was what the old was at the old uh, Warner Brothers lot in uh, in Burbank. And I had made a point with him to talk to him about doing uh, Salem's Lot. You know, he directed uh, the uh, miniseries of uh, right. Salem's yeah. Lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my agent, you know, said there's a oh, Hooper's directing Salem's Lot. This has just been announced. I got the breakdown of all the roles, and there are like three roles that are really good for you in here because I looked really, really young, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there were a lot of teenagers, it, it, you know, in that uh, in that film. And uh, so I made an appointment to see him, and I made it over there and mm-hmm. drove over there, and then uh, made it onto the lot. Then went to his office and he wasn't there. Of course. Well, uh, are they ever? But uh, you know, <laughs> so I'm used to waiting. But uh, his uh, sister was like, uh, "John, he'll be back uh, any time now." He went to lunch. Then, and, and this is before the days of cell phones. You know, this was 1977, yeah. uh, 78, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, so I sat, 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 sat. And, you know, 15 months later, she goes, sorry, John, he should be here any second. And I waited another 15, 20 minutes. I probably waited 45 minutes. And she goes, John, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened to him. I said, it's okay. It's not your fault. I got to leave. And um, I got about halfway to my car. And there he was, standing in the middle of the lot, talking to somebody. Hmm. And I walked up behind him and said, hey, Toby. He turned around and looked at me and I said, we had an appointment, a one o'clock appointment. He goes, oh, yeah, John. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Listen, I I, I gave a thought to this. And, uh, you know, the only thing good for you in this film was I for as a $50 a day extra. And I didn't figure it out. Oh, man. You know, be a fifty dollar a day extra, would you? And I said, oh, "No, I wouldn't." Mm. Thanks a lot. And I walked away, and that was the last time I talked. But... Yeah, oh. that man. I mean, yeah. legit. Oh. Like... Yeah, he was a jackass. I mean, a total fucking coke 
out Jack. Yeah, I, I've, I've definitely heard. Did I heard say that out loud? <laughs> no, you're not the only one. I've heard rumors for sure. Um, but I mean, hands down. Well, let you me are... tell you something about the cocaine use. You know, if you really want to get down and dirty with those Let's do people. it. I went to see one time in his office. Uh, his first office, he and Kim's first office at Universal was an old one of those old Quonset hut buildings at Universal. Mm-hmm. So it was like a military, it looked like an old military barracks or something, you know? Yeah. It was really long and uh, narrow. So his desk, there was like nothing in there except a big desk and two chairs and like a rubber, a fake plant, you know, yeah. in the corner. <laughs> so he had to walk about 50 yards from the door over and sit down next to a desk, you know, and he's buying this huge desk. So I'm talking to him about it. So I was trying to get to the young actors uh, program there or something. They were starting to, they were actually back then, they were starting to go back, try um, having a stable of contract actors. Yeah, yeah. They were putting, putting together a group of contract actors like, like had been done back in the 40s or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They were trying to bring that back. And um, mm-hmm. I was trying to get involved in that program. And um, so I went to him for help. And uh, so as we're sitting there talking, he opens up the top drawer of his desk and he pulls out like a cosmetic jar. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That big around. Jeez. Full of cocaine. Good Lord. And uh, yeah. Gets out a spoon, takes a couple of huge hits in each nostril, then puts it back in his desk without offering <laughs> motherfucker right <laughs> what a jerk what kind of an asshole what kind of a cocksucker does that yeah, and that's the moral of the story for sure <laughs> can't give a guy a leg up and can't hook anybody up with some coke <laughs> don't even give you a fucking spoon yeah, you, know? you at least get a reach around i mean come on not even, fucking, not even a line you know not even just a little spoonful but um and then when I got hired to do uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors with Tom, Tom Holland as a director, <laughs> I got a call from Tom Holland and nobody wanted me. But Victor Miller and Kerry Fleming, the two writer producers of the film, mm-hmm. wanted me. They insisted on me. Tom didn't want me because it was a very important role. And, you know, at first they had me on just as an extra. And then. I had signed all the paperwork. No, I had gotten all the paperwork and hadn't signed it yet. I just got it. And I got a, a call or a message from the uh, casting director, Megan Mara. Um, and uh, she said, don't sign that, John. Hold on. Things have changed. I thought, oh, God, I've been shit canned before I even started. This. Before you even started, yeah. 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 And uh, she goes, just hold on, hold tight, you know. She just hold me about a half an hour later. She goes, John, they want you to. There's been a change. I thought, here it comes. I said, what? I said, they want you to play Uncle Charles. I was like, Uncle Charles. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like a major character, you know, really yeah. major supporting character yeah. role in the film. And have you seen it? You guys yeah, seen it? I, yeah, I have. I'm a I'm a big Michael Madsen fan, so I always try. To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how I stumbled across it. Well, I got a Michael Madsen story for you too. <laughs> oh man, I better he not was, tell it. Yeah, a I jar of coke because he's not dead yet. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> um, so I get this phone call from. Tom Holland, at the time, I didn't know that he, I didn't know who the director was on the film. You know, I wasn't privy to that information. Right? I just had to <laughs> So you didn't think that, you were going to be another, you know, Chucky doll or anything, right? <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I didn't know Tom was the director. And I get a call, which I missed, but I get a message saying, Duggan, Tom Holland. <laughs> 
on my mobile. Call me on my landline. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, shit, Tom Holland. <laughs> and I was totally confused. Why would Tom Holland be calling? Right. And I mentioned to uh, Stacy, I said, that was Tom Hall. Now, why would Tom Hall be calling me? She goes, John, <laughs> this is why she's the woman. <laughs> John. <laughs> Maybe he's directing Rock Paper. At the time, it was called Rock Paper Dead. I was like, oh, oh, yeah, okay. So I call him back. And um, he wants to know, he's all concerned if I can handle the role. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Tom, I can handle it. You know, I'm an experienced, and trained, and good actor. I can handle the role. As a matter of fact, I'll kick ass at it. Because, oh, I just, <laughs> you know, I haven't seen, a, you know, you haven't done a whole lot. And, uh, you know, and I just uh, didn't know. I said, "I trust me, I can handle it." And uh, so, after my first day there in L.A., after my first day on set, which of course your first day in town, if you're jet lagged and everything, they schedule all your hardest yeah. scenes, <laughs> all six a.m. Right. the following morning. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. They always do. Mm-hmm. It's like we got him here. Let's do this <laughs> shit. You know? like, God damn, man! Give me you know you, a couple of days to work my way. <laughs> but um, so uh, we get done with the first setup. They're gonna move the lights and the camera and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a really difficult scene. And uh, it's you know I met my complete perverted glory in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> you know, lusting over a fucking 12 year old boy in a bathtub you know? oh jeez uh, <laughs> uh, I felt dirty when I get home from yeah. work you know? mm-hmm. it was it was rough but um, you know you gotta go there yeah right <laughs> yeah, real, yeah. You know? but um, so he said hey John come here would you I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so I walk over to him. I was like, yes, Tom. And he goes, where have you been for the last 40 years? Oh. I said, whoa. <laughs> Guess I've done something right. Yeah. I've been trying to get into uh, Toby Hooper's desk to get some coke. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got that locked well, up tire you know, in four I, You know, I raised a, you know, I raised a daughter. I worked. I, uh, you know. Do an occasional thing because what have you been playing like kindly grandfathers and uncles and things like that? And I said, Yeah, as a matter of fact, I've been playing uncles and grandpas and occasional cop. And I said, What you know, you told me that you'd talk to Toby. Oh yeah, he told me on the phone. I called my friend Toby up to ask about you. And I said, What you know, what did Toby tell you? And he goes, Well, he told me he didn't really know that much about you, just that the only reason he hired you was because of your stature. <sighs> this was two months after Toby died. I was about to say, and yeah, thought, that's right. That's the same year that Toby son died. Son of a bitch. Oh, fuck him. <laughs> the last thing he did before he stepped foot in his fucking grave was to try to get me fired from a fucking job. Oh, my God. Should have ate you him. Know? What the ate fuck him. is the matter with this guy? <laughs> you know? Jesus Christ. So you can see why there's no love lost. Yeah, right sure. There. Yeah, yeah, sure. Completely 100%. Understand. Yeah. But hey, at least, you know, you got Tom Holland blowing sunshine up your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shit, yeah, man. Did you get any cocaine? Hey, did you get any cocaine from him? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no coke from Tom. <sighs> yeah, okay. All you right, what? all right, all right. LA has changed so much since I left there in the late seventies. Nobody even offered me any coke. Yeah, nobody does yeah. coke anymore. They just uh, they uh, just have Epstein kids. So <laughs> too soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> uh, 
What the hell's that mean, Steph? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, please, <laughs> please don't elaborate. <laughs> don't let me send know. all your hate. Send all your hate mail to Stephen Gearhart. But speaking of shady <laughs> things, uh, the 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 thing that I love the most is that I the thing that I found out was that the members of the crew during Texas Chainsaw Massacre didn't even know that you were playing Grandpa, which makes yeah, it even yeah. better. No, I'd been there. Yeah, I didn't know until I showed up in the makeup trailer. So okay. even better because I'm sure it allowed you to play even harder um because if i haven't said this yet you have always been my legit favorite part of that movie since i was a kid was grandpa and oh yeah well, thank so, you yes it is in my opinion the thing it makes me laugh it makes me scared at the same time it's disturbing and hilarious and it's perfect yeah. <laughs> I, i've always my fault my my father, who's not even really like interested in horror films or anything like that, he saw Texas Chainsaw when it first came out, and I asked him about. It. I'm a little kid, and I asked him about, it, and he's like, "Well, there's this part where this old man's sucking on this woman's finger. <laughs> That's the part he described." <laughs> I'm like, "What the, the hell?" And up and drop. Oh god, yeah. it's so good. It's so good. And just hearing all these stories about how hot it was and all that stuff. I can't imagine how you made it through that, man. And now find out it? Toby Hooper's a dick, too. So. Well, well, yeah, well, well while, while we're while we're while it's uh, we're being honest around this. Time, it, I, I heard you say something a lot on an interview, say something where the writers are trying to come up with a scene to get Marilyn Burns top torn off. Is that true? Yeah, that was <laughs> <laughs> that was me and Toby and Kim uh, smoking dope <laughs> um, <laughs> over at uh, over at Toby's apartment uh, one evening. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so we have to. I was like, we've got to put a scene in there where we all get to see Marilyn's tits. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know Kim was trying to justify it but you know he has a he has integrity so <laughs> right <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, like you know that that whole scene, that that scene with her at the dinner table, the whole thing, that yeah. like I and gore never bothered me when I was a kid and gore was never what bothered me about the film. It was the psychological factor of that entire scene. No, you know what? Uh, Stefan, there's very little gore in the yeah. in yeah. the film. Yeah. It's and, all in your head. Sure, yeah, it, yes, 100% agree with that. Yeah. But yeah, that that scene and then with her running off at the very end, that stuck with me for a long time. Um, but especially that moment with Grandpa, you know, because people it's so will different. swear there are two there there are two scenes that people swear uh, that they see Gore in, which they really don't. And one is uh, when Paul Partain, when Franklin gets killed. Mm-hmm. They swear they see him cut in half and all sorts of blood and guts coming out of him and all that yeah. stuff. It's all shot from behind in silhouette. Yeah. It's all yeah. backlit. Yeah. There's nothing. There's some there's some blood splattering up on Leatherface. Right. Some kickback blood, you know. Yeah. And that's it. Um, yeah, like what was that like <laughs> being in that latex and that cause I mean, just I hear the whole shoot itself was just hotter than oh i thought you were going to ask me about alexandria dr the dario and she is smoking <laughs> yes yes indeed i got to sit next to her she sat next to me twice i think in the in the uh, cast van on the way to location mm. <laughs> right out what what <laughs> Okay, so I'm fanning a little bit. Good God <laughs> almighty. So Stacy's making fun of me. Going, <laughs> um and uh she was right out of the shower, her hair was so wet and everything you could smell the shampoo on her and all that. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and of course of course we were all waiting for her and she was running like twenty minutes late and we're all in this fucking boiling hot van. Mm-hmm. But because those big vans don't cool down until you, you know, the AC doesn't work very well until you're driving them down the road. Yeah, know? right. Yeah, I had a friend. It was a big old thir thirteen passenger van, you know. 
She's and uh, everybody's like, God damn it, where is she? You know, <laughs> she did this twice, two days in a row. And um, uh, she came in and sat down next to me and, and smiled, looked at me and said, sorry, I'm late. And I was like, oh, oh no, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, late now. <laughs> just be, we haven't like, been Alexandra, waiting that you long. You can do honey. whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> <laughs> so but uh, dirty old man. yeah, I am a dirty old man. <laughs> You've earned it. You have earned it. Yeah, you started yeah, your yeah. career as a dirty well, you old know man. What? She, yeah. she, she, she's eighteen years younger than me, so I guess I am a dirty old man. <laughs> Ooh, my wife's in her late forties. Woo, Rob that Ooh, cradle. Yeah. Babelicious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle of a divorce, so <laughs> Hey. I've had three of them. Oh. Yeah, my, <laughs> da- my dad my dad collects divorces. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Stephen? I said my dad collects divorces, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so you got to work with her and you got to work with Renee Zellweger and uh, said that she called you Dugan the cop. Is that the. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Dugan the cop. Dugan the cop. Uh, Renee is a real sweetheart. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I heard she. I, I love Renee. Um, that movie is something special and uh, Will McConaughey, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's so goddamn bizarre in that thing. He, yeah. Well, he's bizarre and I, I've just never in really real life. seen that. Oh, yeah, he's bizarre in real life, too, mm-hmm. for sure. But just, uh, I've never really seen the whole thing. No, really? You're not missing. You're not missing much. <laughs> no, not a finished product. I mean, I had I had a work print that they sent me because mm-hmm. I had to do some ADR. Yeah. Uh, but it still had time code on it, and it was unedited, and there was no color adjustment. And, hell, I don't think it was any sound or anything. I don't know. It's it's such an odd film that was trying to get into that '90s serial killer craze that just it it didn't work. But the the remakes did, and that's why I was so pumped to see you in Texas Chainsaw 3D because those are excellent. I absolutely love the newer ones. They're so good, and I just I I like 3D. I I think there was a problem with the time frame. You know. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. it was like prequel, prequel, which everybody bitched about. But it, you know, it's a matter of just you know suspending your disbelief. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Going but I love it. it. I, I love them, and it, like I said, it was cool having you back. Um, and it, I guess that was kind of fun for you to go full circle. You know, how did you get? How did you get? Oh involved? yeah, it was great. How did you get involved with that? That one, three D. Oh, they contacted me. Oh. They wanted uh, Carl Mazacone, who's an executive producer for uh, Fuck. Lionsgate. Mm-hmm. No, I guess Lionsgate. Uh, he's just a huge fan of the film and wanted to bring some original people back for uh, cameo, you know, little roles if you could, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he got me, Gunner. He got Gunner and he got uh, Marilyn. And who? Oh, Paul been dead for years. He was just a corpse up against the wall. <laughs> huh? No, that was that was uh, that was the one with Renee Zeller. Okay. So, yeah, Paul Partain was in the the one with Renee and and Matthew. Oh, I thought that's where you were. Right. Um, but uh, and uh, then uh, Mosley from Part Two, yeah, you know, took over uh, the role of uh, Drayton yeah. Sawyer, and uh, did an excellent job, you know. Um. So yeah, it was cool to all be together. Yeah, you know, I bet. I bet. Yeah. 
So now, now has this, you know, obviously now they're like, oh, well, you're you're the horror guy. Even, you know, we, we know you can do more than that. Does that bother you to be kind of niched in that way? Or do you just embrace the hell out yeah, of it? I'm fun? just glad to work, you know. I'll right. do anything. I do a sitcom if you ask me to. Yeah. I would watch the shit out of a Sawyer family sitcom. I'll tell you that <laughs> yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grandpa. God, wouldn't that be yeah. funny? Oh, my God, I would watch it. It has to be shot like like an eighty sitcom though, like oh, Full yeah. House or <laughs> Who's the Boss? Yeah. Or... Uh, three camera video shoot. <laughs> <laughs> live studio audience has to be a yeah. live. Anytime yeah. blood gets sprayed, there has to be laughter. Yeah. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, shit. Well, we're going to wrap things up here a little bit, John, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about what what kind of stuff you got coming up that we can look forward to to see what you got uh, in the future because, you know, we've got people that love watching you and everything you do. Okay, my most recent films out are, of course, Rock, Paper, uh, Scissors, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. which have been out for a couple of years now. Um, But it's available on all sorts of streaming sites and on DVD and Blu-ray and all that shit. Um, have you seen Deviant Behavior by any chance? Have not seen that yet, yeah. but I'm looking Haven't at the got list right here. Yeah. Well, you know what? I can't believe you haven't seen it. <laughs> that you have the balls to call me up to do this <laughs> fucking thing. Uh, oh no! <laughs> you haven't even seen Deviant Behavior. Oh no! It's on what my a list. couple of jagoffs. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to give you any cocaine and... either. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh deviant behavior and then uh i have coming up two well one film for sure in texas uh after the first year called the blues man which is about um about 90 minutes long <laughs> yeah it's about, about robert johnson's it's guitar, about right? uh, yeah oh, that's, yeah that's it's cool about, yeah I, I play an old uh, uh uh, pawn shop owner in a small town in Texas who ends nice. up with uh, Robert Johnson's guitar, which has been stolen out of his grave. That's <laughs> I oh, up man. With Johnson, man. In, in my safe, yeah. And uh, the devil comes around and wants his fucking guitar. <laughs> that's so cool. And Bill Mosley's in that as well. So that's, I mean, I'm that's, Bill Mosley. Yeah. Uh, Ed Neal is in it. Oh, yeah. And uh, there's there's four of us from uh, the Chainsaw franchise. Uh, Dwayne Whitaker. Nice. From uh, he was in the third, I think, Chainsaw Three. And he was uh, he's best known for uh, Pulp Fiction. He yeah. played the pawn shop owner in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. You know the sadist, the, yeah, the fucking perverted yeah. sadist guy. Get get the gimp. Get the gimp. <laughs> yeah, get the gimp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, he's a good friend of mine too. Dwayne's a fucking trip. Man. That's awesome. Yeah, he's a hell of an actor. I mean, just really good. So uh, there's four of us from the Chainsaw franchise in there. Well, we'll be Which, definitely uh, checking be that out. Yeah. When 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 can when can we uh, expect that? Again to see it, yeah. Oh, probably a year and a half or so from now, I would think. Okay, we're not going to be able to start shooting before the end of January, I don't think. Yeah, well, yeah, all this COVID stuff pushed back, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, uh, I've been talking to Billy Pond about doing his new, uh, new film called. That's an interesting like cowboy time. Zomb- like cowboys, it's, uh, it's about zombie cowboys or something. It's a <laughs> western. Or something. It's a western with zombies. Yeah, I know. No, no, I know. I'm all about it. Not so I haven't, uh, I haven't made a deal with him yet, but we've talked about that, and that would also be in Texas about the same time. So you know, maybe cool, I can walk off two films yeah. and one. Yeah. Are you gonna? I, I know this is gonna be coming out. Uh, after afterwards, but uh, are you going to be part of this? Uh, Joe Bob Briggs. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, yeah. It's Friday. Uh, look at my 
Facebook page, and there should be a link on there. We'll oh, do, yeah, yeah. Def- yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll, we'll be, we'll push the hell out of that and share that. We love Joe. Yeah, yeah, it's on, it's on, it's going to be on Vimeo. Uh, Vimeo. Vimeo, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a pay per view. Oh, really? So. Well, wow. yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I heard about this. I'm really because I'm obviously I'm a big fan of you and the film and Joe Bob. So, so uh, Friday uh, is the commentary with the cast, and Saturday is the commentary with the crew. Oh, wow, that's going to be great. Yeah, and Kim Hankel is on both of them. If oh, you want to actually cool. see, if you want to hear Kim Hankel <laughs> and see him. Because he's such a fucking recluse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well, he is. You know, he just is. Well, everybody kind is private, nowadays. He's a kind of a private guy, you know. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, you should tune in to that. Yeah, I got it's that information. Bucks. Yeah, I got it pulled up right here. We'll we'll share that. Tonight, Twenty bucks though. a night, or thirty bucks for the for both nights. Very cool. Not yeah, this will come out after that, but we're still going to, we'll still go ahead and push this uh, for yeah. because we'll be watching as well. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. good. Cool, man. All right. Well, we don't want to hold you too long since your wife's half naked. So, we yeah. <laughs> we don't want to keep you away from that. <laughs> oh, she's, she's dressed now. Oh, no. oh boo. I mean, that means you got some work to do. <laughs> yeah. She, yeah. She, she took a shower. She took a shower. Sitting down eating dinner. <laughs> well, thank you so much, John, for letting us screw around and have yes. a good time and talk to you about thank old you, questions sir. and have fun talking about haircuts and all that crap. Um, and assholes. <laughs> and assholes. And- <laughs> hey, you know what? I was thinking. You know, we were talking about the kid with the with the male pattern bald and the haircut. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking about doing that for this film. When I play the old pawnbroker. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, please. And, and doing, you know, yeah. cutting my hair with male pattern baldness and doing the sides gray. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I mean, you yes. got, you got, you got a nice head of hair though. You got man. a nice quaff. It does. Yeah. Something. I'm almost seventy years old. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, you gray. Yeah. My dad, my dad's walking with three hairs right now. That's what. He's, so you're <laughs> killing him. <laughs> does he take him and like swirl them all around his head like my dad did? Yes. Oh my God. No, my dad has actually moved to where he just wears hats all the time. That's what he does now. <laughs> he's seventy. My so old he... man did this ridiculous fucking comb over thing. You know, oh. and it's like, who are you fooling? You know? Yeah, no, nah, dad and never his, did the his, comb overs though, but he, he my just, uncle he would Billy, Michael Billy, who was a dad's younger brother who looked just like my dad, just started cutting his off real short, you know? Mm hmm. And uh, just went ahead and went bald on the top and cut the sides short and everything. And uh, my mom said, Uncle Billy looks nice. I said, Yeah, mention that to dad. <laughs> She was like, what? I say, just mention that dad <coughs> just like the way Uncle Billy cuts his hair. <laughs> she goes, oh, good idea. So she casually, a couple days later, said, it was nice to see Bill and Jerry. Uncle Billy's hair sure looks great. <laughs> Two days later, my dad had a hair. <laughs> ah, that's it worked. Hilarious. That's hilarious, dude. <laughs> Oh man! Well, again, John, thank you so much, and uh, we'd you. love thank to you have so you come much. back on the show sometime, man. Yes. And, you know, talk with hey, you down the road. Hey, thank you so in. much, guys. I, I, you know, I really enjoyed it. You guys are a lot of fun, and, oh, and we, anytime well, then, I got you, spare time and you have a a spot, I'm, I'm glad to come. Across. Oh, we, we, we love, it, love it, man. It. We had an absolute blast, man. So much fun. Okay, <laughs> okay, thank you, man. And with that, dear friends, we come to the end of another delightfully disturbing episode of Mysteries of the Dark. As always, thank you for listening. Thank you to the Fearscape Media Network. And thank you to Corey Adams and Ashley Jones Adams from Nothing Wrong for our musical scene. Now, Mr. Dugan, we would be honored if you would... Stop that! Ah! What? It wasn't my fault. (laughs) I suppose Mr. Dugan chopped off his own head and hurled the rest of his body on top of our grill by himself. Accidents happen, Lance. Accidents.
Stephen. Oh, Stephen. You just need to get into the Christmas spirit, buddy, okay? Listen, I know this is, you know, not the most appropriate time, but it would be a shame for all of him to go to waste. Suppose it would. Oh, I can't stay mad at you. Sweet, I'll go get the A1. <laughs> ah, boy. But before we go, dear friends, I'll leave you with this. Cannibalism is a radical but realistic solution to the problem of overpopulation. Good night.